Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season we're discussing issues that I've personally wrestled with with regard to the faith. Last time we talked about how heaven has plenty of riches. This time, what are the riches of heaven like? Give, and it shall be given to you. Good measure, and pressed down, and shaken together, and running over, shall they give into your bosom. For with the same measure that you shall meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. Luke 6, 38. This obviously doesn't mean that people will receive no more in heaven than they gave on earth. It means that the willingness to give which people show in life will be shown to them in the afterlife. This amounts to much greater gifts for the generous, since God is able to give greater gifts than man can. And every one that hath left house, or brethren, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands, for my name's sake, shall receive a hundredfold, and shall possess life everlasting. And many that are first shall be last, and the last shall be first. Matthew 19, 29-30 Jesus explains that the depth of what we sacrifice for him, and the degree to which we are treated as unworthy of respect for the sake of him, has a strong effect on our fate in heaven. Jesus answering said, Amen, I say to you, there is no man who hath left house, or brethren, or sisters, or father, or mother, or children, or lands, for my sake and for the gospel, who shall not receive a hundred times as much, now in this time, houses, and brethren, and sisters, and mothers, and children, and lands, with persecutions, and in the world to come, life everlasting. Mark ten twenty nine to 30 Every person who sacrifices for heaven will get back much more than he sacrificed, but will also be persecuted in this life. Jesus obviously didn't mean to say that we'd be persecuted in heaven. The kingdom of heaven is like unto a treasure hidden in a field, which a man having found, hid it, and for joy thereof goeth, and selleth all that he hath, and buyeth that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like to a merchant seeking good pearls, who, when he had found one pearl of great price, went his way and sold all that he had, and bought it. Matthew thirteen forty four to 46 These two parables illustrate the type of rewards one can expect of heaven. No man would be foolish enough to sell everything that he has in exchange for one pearl, no matter how valuable, then just sit out in his field with it until he starved to death. The reason he buys the pearl is that he expects to be able to make a profit by selling it for much more than he bought it for. In the same way, we can profit greatly off of the treasures of heaven, much more so than those that we have, or could ever have in this life. Likewise, in the first parable, we see a man buying a field which he knows contains secret treasure, because once he obtains the treasure, he'll be rich enough to buy back everything he sold and more besides. The same is true of heaven. Nothing that we sacrifice to the burdensome demands of virtue in this life cannot be regained in heaven. Blessed is that servant whom, when his Lord shall come, he shall find so doing. Amen, I say to you, he shall place him over all his goods. Matthew 24, 46-47 The faithful servant is rewarded by God with all of his goods, meaning in this case either everything that God owns, or else literally every good thing. If I have spoken to you earthly things, and you believe not, how will you believe if I shall speak to you heavenly things? John three twelve. The good things, like baptism, that God gives to us in this life, are hard for people to believe, but even harder to believe are the things of heaven, which are so amazing and good, that the people of this life would find them harder to believe than a work of fiction. And saith to him, Every man at first setteth forth good wine, and when men have well drunk, then that which is worse, but thou hast kept the good wine until now. John 2.10 This is also the way that God arranges his feast, starting out by setting forth imperfect food and drink in this life, then the good wine in eternal life. So the riches of heaven will be much greater than those that are sacrificed to reach it. In short, heaven is always a good investment, as long as you don't give up on it too soon. Next, is being rich on earth a sin in itself? That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.